Newburgh, Oregon is in a pleasant state of excitement for its most famous son has come home. Herbert Hoover, accompanied by Secretary of the Interior McKay, has returned to celebrate his 81st birthday. Here are gathered old neighbors and friends to visit his boyhood home, which will become a national shrine. The old stereopticon takes the ex-president back 70 years, mementos of the days when he sought fame and fortune at 15 to become an engineer, statesman, and humanitarian known throughout the world. Yes, there are many memories in the home of his uncle, where the orphan boy came to get his start. As usual, Mr. Hoover presides at the cake cutting, and with the passing years, his neighbors get a warmer and warmer welcome. Happy birthday, Mr. President, and many more. A backlog of more than 200 bills from the last session of Congress follows President Eisenhower on a short vacation at his Gettysburg farm. Some of the crucial legislation gets his signature, and some is set aside for further study. Even on a farm, the presidential chores are never done. His handsome Dutch colonial home is the product of two years of remodeling. But at the moment, his attention goes to the handsome Holstein heifer, a gift for his growing herd of pedigreed stock. She'll have lots of playmates her own age around here, the president remarked. It's not a surrey, but it has a dandy fringe on top. The Ike and Mamie comes in handy for touring from pasture to pasture, complete with secret service men. It doesn't happen every day, but here it is. A Chinese junk sails under the Golden Gate Bridge, completing a four-month journey from Japan. The crew of six receives a rousing welcome as they finish the 4,500-mile voyage in their 30-ton craft. The hardy mariners consist of five free Chinese refugees from the Reds and Calvin Merritt, American vice consul on Formosa. Theirs is the first craft of its kind to enter San Francisco Harbor in 17 years. Now that the sound barrier has been cracked, the thermal or heat barrier is the goal of the experimental X-2 rocket plane. Carried to 30,000 feet by a B-29, the stainless steel bullet designed to stand speeds of more than 2,000 miles an hour and reach an altitude of 100,000 feet is released. On these tests, the rocket plane is not fueled, but in future runs, when it attains maximum velocity, heat developed by friction may reach more than 1,000 degrees. Here, the ability of metal and alloys to withstand the heat are expected to provide valuable data for projected spaceships and satellites. The slim metal ship may furnish some of the answers as the world enters the space age. At Edwards Air Force Base, tests continue on new model ejection seats, never ceasing research to increase the narrow margin of safety afforded America's jet airmen, keeping pace with the greater speeds and greater hazards of tomorrow's combat planes. Dummies ride the seats, shot aloft from the hurtling rocket sled. Here, a multiple ejection from a simulated stratojet cabin. An unusual scene from the Defense Department camera shows the force with which the seat is ejected, necessary in flight to get clear of the plane. Here on the ground, the dummy shoots aloft high enough for the chute to open. A rough landing in store for the dummy, but for some future jet pilot in trouble, the results of this test may mean a life saved. Moppets ride the merry-go-round of fashion in a New York showing of fall styles for tots and toddlers. Kids carousel in pretty new clothes, a formula for happiness. The Mad Hatter is master of ceremonies, and there's a goat cart for them as can't take the dizzy whirl of the merry-go-round. But enough fun and frolic. On with the show. High fashion for half pints or what the lollipop set will be wearing. Gay, colorful motifs are emphasized, well planned to delight any youngster. Most of the patterns feature favorite cartoon characters. And to make mom happy, they're styled in color fast, easy to wash synthetics. What's this, artistic temperament or too much excitement? No matter, tears vanish as quickly as they come and the show goes on. Youth riding high on the wheel of fashion. Fans forget the American League's red-hot pennant race for an evening under the lights in Portland's Multnomah Stadium. 
20,000 turnout on a warm summer night as the Pittsburgh Steelers meet the Los Angeles Rams in a preseason pro-grid thriller. Pittsburgh scores early for a 10-7 lead. But the Rams surge back, Quinlan battering through center for 19 yards. Norm Van Brocklin fires a pass to Fears. And it's another first down for the Rampagian Rams. McCormick through the line for L.A. and a touchdown. Some hard feelings in that play. Time out to break up a goal line hassle. Later in the game with Pittsburgh trailing, Dick Eaton at quarterback passes and connects for a 20-yard gain. Eaton takes the ball again, fades back, and it's another pass. It's completed, and Hackey heads for the goal, only to meet a rude setback. Net gain, 15 yards. Pittsburgh again, Rogel carrying, and he goes across for a touchdown. But it's too little and too late. Already ahead, the Rams score a goal they don't need to clinch a 35-24 victory. 